15-25 hours. Hi Chris, we ring begins on this number. Thanks very much, bye bye. <laughs> that music. Columbus Park, Lower Manhattan, um, you're about to hear a chat with Alex Prober. Alex is a wonderful person and uh, has designed some incredible things, swimming pools, uh, things for your pets, furniture, uh, she does art as well and um, you should check out her stuff, Studio Prober on uh, Instagram and uh, yeah, Columbus Park, we've just had the chat, but you're going to listen to it now. And um, this is a great park. I thought I would, um, yeah, just do the intro here, but we're on the edge of Chinatown and there's a lot of um, people playing dominoes and card games and things. It's really, really popular. Uh, a statue here of Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the uh, nationalist Chinese leader, and it says... All under heaven are equal, which is uh, surely a great um, thing to say. I like I like that philosophy, Doctor Sun. Um, if you like Park Date, um, please do subscribe and like, and leave us a review and uh, follow us on socials at Park Date Podcast and. Um, I'll say goodbye from New York for now and enjoy this chat with Alex Prober. Welcome to Columbus Park in Lower Manhattan on a beautiful, sunny fall day. Um, You can hear in the background lovely music and uh, I'm here with Alex Prober. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, thank you for having me. Yeah, you, you said you, we, we were talking about where to um, meet today and you suggested Columbus Park. I've never been here before and I was just walking through and there's lots of Chinese people. We're near Chinatown. Uh, it's got a lovely uh, lovely atmosphere, hasn't it? It's a statue of Dr. Sun Yat-sen and people playing cards and dominoes and things. Dog yeah. playing ball. Yeah, there's a dog playing ball. Yeah, exactly. No, I, 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 like when you asked me about the parks, I yeah. on purpose didn't want to do one of those big ones, but I actually yeah. did spend a lot of time in this one for unknown reasons, really. <laughs> but it's a awesome one just because you experience like a little bit of the culture that New York has, yeah. um, and all the pockets of different, um, you know, uh, melting pot of all these people within the pockets where they like, you know, we pretty much all um, there's not. We're pretty much not, the only not Chinese right now yeah. in the park, and <laughs> which is which is lovely. And um, in the mornings, you see a lot of um, women just doing their morning ritual workout all together, and there's going to be like 20, 30 uh, women in all ages just doing that. So I just remember that very fondly from this park. And yeah, you were t- you were telling me weren't you about yeah, yeah the women doing the workouts yeah, in the morning. It looks that, cool. Yeah, is that like Tai Chi or I something? I think so, something yeah. like that. Um, and they. Some are like 80 years old and some are 20, so it's kind of awesome to like witness that. And it's like very New York. It is, isn't it? I love it when you see old people staying uh, fit and healthy. Oh, there's a, but that's it's a spaniel, I think, isn't it? It's a spaniel, it's very like want... cute. I miss my dog right now. He's he's on the west coast, but I'll be back there tomorrow. <laughs> you're gonna be back. You're gonna be back there exactly. Yeah. yeah. When the, the spaniel came over. Alex was like, oh, <laughs> I think he he might come and play with us in a minute. A- Alex cute. said we're on a soccer field. Alex said. Uh, meet, meet me on the soccer or football, as we'd say in, in England field, uh, wearing a flower, a flowery dress. Uh-huh. You look very, very beautiful and very cool in your uh, in your dress, Alex. And Thank very, you. You love colour, don't you? you always, you always I, look, I do love yeah, colour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I grew up in Germany in a family of doctors, and they are not much fun. They're not fond of colour that much. So the house was always black and white, and the only yeah. colour we had was navy. Yeah. And so I think somehow that's how I'm like the black sheep in the company yeah. turning like everything into color yeah and my grandma actually um, the one that I spent most of my childhood with she used to be a florist and she was the only one wearing color and patterns on patterns and things like that so I kind of like 
come after her for sure. Yeah, I, I, I remember when we talked before when I was um, doing an interview yeah. with you, Alex, you mentioned about your grandma being a florist, which is really, really vivid vivid memory but that's funny about it's funny about Germany as well isn't it it's like uh, in Berlin for example I don't know if you know colour is actually illegal by state law <laughs> it's the law that you have to wear black uh, and everything has to be black so <laughs> there's not really much colour there is there <laughs> it's, there's grey there's shades of <laughs> yes grey is allowed sh- grey is allowed shades of black yeah but yeah, yeah. Um, so I just yeah just growing up with not much of that I think I turned into quite the opposite yeah um, yeah. And so you used to be based all the time in, in New York, didn't you, Alex? And now you split your time between the West Coast and, and New York. Um, yeah. So this is a, a sort of rare, a rare visit. It was good that we could, we could catch you while you were here. Yeah, I'm mostly on the West Coast now, but um, every now and then for projects, um, I come in. Yesterday I had a gallery opening in the city, so I came in. But most of my time right now is just like, maybe I'm old but I was 12 years in New York, like, hustling, and then now I'm on the West Coast, and COVID kind of, like, reset you. And, like, um, you know, we have a dog now, as mentioned earlier, yeah. and it's just, like, a very different lifestyle. I'm very busy still, obviously, with work and my studio, but in a setting that is not as busy anymore, so you kind of, like, I don't know, there's, like, just more relaxation that I appreciate, which I didn't know that I was missing when I was living here because you're always, like, on the go. Um, but then I'm here every now and then I was like okay I miss it so much I love New York it's the best city ever so yeah yeah it's intense isn't it I love like how vibrant yeah yeah crazy and exciting the city is it's it's overwhelming and there's there's so much Um, and yeah so you had your your opening last night how did that go was it a success it Uh, was fun yeah Um, it was like a lot of friends I haven't seen for a while because of COVID and other reasons and um, distance and time and all that stuff but yeah it was a very special show for me actually because as just previously mentioned um, my grandma is very important for me but the whole show uh, is an homage to her so every painting every sculpture is based on a memory I have of her from the past and she's alive she knows about it she is excited so it was a very special show for me and very florally because of her um, and um, yeah, I think it's it's good. You should check it out online. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone should go and yeah. uh, go huh? and look at that. I think it's really nice when you have those personal inspirations. Um, yeah, your grandma obviously figures very largely in your in your consciousness, and yeah, that's so sweet that you could pay tribute to her by by making the the, the pieces. Um, but uh, yeah, like a homage, a homage to her, right? Yeah, and she, I don't, I, I always text her with images of things I work on. Mm-hmm. Um, and she always tells me what she likes and doesn't and so I on purpose didn't send, tell her that I'm doing it for her and so I was like waiting until she figures something out and she did figure it out did so she? <laughs> she did so I was just like great succeeded because like she it's still me and it's a lot of like what people know from my work yeah. but she saw the change of a lot of things in there and a lot of like gradient use which I normally don't use much in gradient like from floral worlds yeah. and she was like wait a minute that's the shirt I wore like in 92 and I was like yeah that's your shirt you know that I kind of like abstractly painted and stuff like that so yeah. um, so she figured it out by herself which was good yeah <laughs> that's so beautiful grandmas uh-huh. are so important in, in your life aren't they I, I always talk about my, my uh, one of my grannies in particular I have very very um potent memories of her um, and she was she was quite a large figure in my life and I think grandmas are incredible aren't they they're, they're they, they really are they, they they're the best and if you still have them yeah. call them <laughs> exactly yeah go, call your granny now go and exactly. spend time with them yeah 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 it's so um, it's nice to have that in your life yeah well Alex why don't we go for a little stroll around the park sure. and we can uh, we'll talk some more um, we, let's walk around the soccer field and then we'll walk over to the sounds good it's also fake grass yeah grass. it's fake fake grass isn't it exactly <laughs> like a astroturf or something some kind of astroturf yes. yeah exactly um so what's um what are some of your sort of memories of parks alex do you do you remember going to maybe with your granny or with with your parents or something do you remember going to parks when you were younger? the part where I'm from, from Ger- in Germany, it's not a very big town, and there weren't many parks per se. Yeah. There's still not many like parks or playgrounds, but it was surrounded kind of in nature and hills. So yeah. we would go like mushroom picking and things like that, oh, but nice. not much, not much of park life there. Yeah, but a lot of nature. Yeah. So like 
So in New York, you have the other contrast, right? You have lack of nature, but yeah. then you find it in the park. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so like especially with friends having kids and stuff in the time that I was living here, a lot of time was spent in the park just because, you know, you can just bring the kids, picnic, and yeah. just hang out with friends. You don't have to like go to a fancy restaurant and stuff. So we did spend a lot of time in, in, the, in the park just to like reset, I guess. Yeah. Even though it's hard to in some because you hear all the music and all the noises still, but you can just still shut that off. Yeah, and you can find if if you go to the you know bigger parks like Hyde Park in London or oh, Pros yeah. Prospect Park here, you can get a kind of solitude that is quite hard to find yeah. in the city, right? Like Prospect Park, I used to live in Brooklyn, so yeah. that's the park I would like run in, mm. and you actually felt like you're not in the city. Yeah, um, it, it feels like the countryside, doesn't it? Yeah, you can't a see. Bit, there's a bit hilly. where you yeah, it's yeah. hilly. You can't see any buildings. It tricks you yeah. to thinking maybe you've gone upstate or something. It, yeah, a almost little <laughs> a little bit. There's parts of it you can get lost for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and I, I feel like um, I think New York had some uh, some ladies playing like card games over there. I love this. Um, I feel like um, from what I've read about how maybe you remember this, but I think New York had uh, a, you know problem with like looking after the city for a lot of years, and I mm -hmm. think parks kind of got forgotten about, but. It strikes me, this, this park is in really nice shape. And whenever I go to Fort Green Park or yep. Prospect Park, they all look like they've been very well cared for. Like, yeah. They've kind of brought the parks back in New York, I think, quite Yeah, I think they have like, like well, all park teams like that, yeah. actually. And they commission a lot of art into parks. And exactly. Same with subways and like all the, yeah. the... Yeah, they're doing a good job. Yeah, I think it's really impressive, actually. So, yeah, t tick for... Uh, Park, uh -huh. park, New York Parks and Rec Department. Because exactly. I think they, I think they do quite a good job, really, like keeping them well, well tended. And yeah, obviously you can see there's so many people here. I think yep. when you you live in a small apartment in the city, you kind of need that space, don't you, to kind of get out there. And, you do, yeah, yeah, for sure. Or just any like, yeah. Or you just get a rental car and go upstate, but you definitely yeah. need that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so Alex, what was, um, what was, what, what was sort of some of the reasons that you chose to go down the road that you you went down into art and design were you kind of inspired at an early age uh to to do that or was it something that came later to you no i mean it was always in me i think but i didn't find it for a while just because um my parents weren't the or aren't still they're not very much like art lovers or museum goers and things like that very much into science and i think they were immigrants from back in the day from uh, communist Poland to mm -hmm. Germany so they kind of like wanted my brother and I to have safe jobs and yeah. that's not art or yeah. design so like nowadays obviously it's a little bit better but when so I actually started with med school I went to dentistry school and then just to like kind of yeah. tick the boxes for them um, but I just couldn't do it um, and then I um, yeah and I spent some time in like exchange programs in Ohio actually as a high schooler and attended a lot of like outside like outside mm. art classes where and I lived with a family there for a year that were super into arts and the mom used to be a designer back in the day at DKNY and stuff so that was kind of I was like 15 16 that's the time where I was like wait I can be an artist or a designer so yeah. it was like that's the time when I just realized I could be and then when I left um, dentistry school I was still too scared to just do like fine arts or something so I went into architecture and graphic design like a dual study thing in Germany and then uh, after that I just worked for architects and then realized that that's way too boring for myself <laughs> um, and architecture is very slow and I have no patience at yeah. all so then I was like okay cool and that was in New York I went to work here and then I decided to go to grad school for more like um, product design furniture design just because that's quicker yeah. than like building a building. Yeah, architecture um, <laughs> takes forever. Yeah, and so I did that and then came back to New York after the, uh, my master's and started back in architecture for some weird reason, but then slowly like went into the brand world and stayed a long time in like agencies and mostly on brand side branding, graphic design, you know, working with clients. And I was at um, Mother Design and Rowan Co, Hugo Marie, like all the designs to use, but as well as startups like Kickstarter and General Assembly. But always on the side, I had Studio Proba, even just because, you know, a job is a job. And even though you, you know, you care about it, you never care as much about it as your own stuff. Yeah. 
Um, so I always had my own stuff, but I wasn't allowed to do it because, I mean, sell it because I was on a visa sponsored by a company. Yeah. So yeah, but my studios actually was has been my little thing always there since 2013. So it's 10 years next year, yeah, which is um, years. crazy. Yeah. And then only, and then I moved. Um, my last role was like five or four years ago at Nike, and then I think after that I was just like. Okay, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna go and see what happens if I do my own thing. And yeah, and ever since I've been not doing any double work shifts, just my studio. So yeah, yeah. concentrating on that. So yeah, yeah. yeah, it's been an interesting journey, and you've done a lot of different things throughout that uh, throughout that journey, haven't you, Alex? What I have, are, What are some yes. of the highlights like leading up to getting to Studio Proba, like in the early days? What were some of the things that you were really proud of um, designing? So I just never knew, I just knew I want to do my own thing, but I didn't have like a business plan written out or a strategy or a project. I just kind of went with whatever, whatever I could do in the time that I had left at night and stuff, because you know, when you have a full-time job, um, often in the creative industry, you're not home at six or seven, you're home later. And um, so I started this project, a poster day, where I did a poster every day because I gave myself 30 minutes and then whatever the hell I do, I just posted on Instagram and I had like 20 followers. I had no followers then. And it was just like a fun thing to do for me after work, like keeping a diary almost. And then the project somehow started getting a lot of traction through media and Instagram. And I was like, oh shit, now I have to continue doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I actually continued doing it for four consecutive years, but changed every year up. So like the first year was my diary. The second year was anyone could submit their story that they wanted to tell me and I translated it visually and then the third year was about questions so they asked the questions I asked uh, I answered them visually and the fourth year was um, about women so stories of women that inspired you or whoever that submitted and that project just really blew up in a weird way from like gallery shows to just like people on the other line waiting for me to do something kind of thing it was like a community project that actually grew my my presence online and I think from then on I kind of had a platform built to be like cool I also made a chair and yeah. a rug and I just it was like because I had people watching and so I just started just doing things like I turned some of the posters into rugs because my background in, in furniture and so I just started doing and adding like projects started doing collaborations with furniture makers and studios I really liked um, and collaboration was really important to me just because again I was still in a job and if there is someone waiting for you to do something, you kind of like do it, right? You don't say like, oh yeah, maybe tomorrow, because do you have you owe it to someone else? Because otherwise, you waste that person's time. So I was doing a lot of collaborations, and um, yeah, and slowly I got you know asked for murals and other projects, and I somehow just fell into art, even though I never, I didn't, I'm not a fine artist. Maybe now I am, but I wasn't. And so it was just like every day I just went with the flow and I still do the same. It looks like I have it all figured out, but I don't. Like, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's the truth. I love, um, I, I love how you kind of put that. I think that's true of a lot of, uh, a lot of people, isn't it, when it comes to creative, creative stuff. Maybe you don't always, yeah. you always know exactly why it's working or what's what's happening um, but it, nope. you, there's a sort of illusion on the surface that it looks like yeah because you all you see is Instagram or you know yeah. you see the final outputs you yeah, don't yeah, see yeah. me running around like a headless chicken like trying to figure out things yeah. and then you don't see me on the other side meaning dealing with having a business and employees and yeah. paying the bills making like a, or packing shipments um, yeah. which we still do ourselves for sh sh sending out orders like you don't see that stuff right you just see look this pretty painting I made yeah. or look at this <laughs> so it is um, and I get a lot of emails with like how tell me how to do it I was like I don't know like yeah. I don't even know how I'm doing it so I think <laughs> I just kept going with like the flow and just trying to survive every day and see where yeah. each day like leads me kind of thing yeah definitely yeah well wh when we t when we talked before Alex one of the things that um, we chatted about uh, which I find I, I'm always talking about maybe is swimming pools and your your designs yeah. for those pools which I think are absolutely amazing Thank and when you. I have my um, 10 million dollar house <laughs> in LA uh, once I've made a movie sounds, sounds I'm, I'm going to get you to come, <laughs> and, uh, come and design the pool but yeah, talk to us about the, the pools that you've been doing recently. You've done a few. There was one in Palm Springs, wasn't there? Two in Palm Springs, two in, yeah. Two in Palm I Springs. mean, one in Strancera Mirage, which is mm -hmm. almost Palm Springs. But yeah, I um, I have a bucket list 
of projects I really yeah. want to do and in my life and one of them was um, a pool yeah. and I always thought it's like a lost canvas like people just never do anything nice with it um, I mean blue is nice but you know don't get me wrong I think it's like a perfect canvas to do something else and and so I did a lot of like studies and renders and sketches and posted them also to to just like put it out mm. in the universe to actually get a client with a pool and then I finally did and um, yeah and I did two in Palm Springs and then I did a bunch of others but mostly the outside of the pool uh, which is also cool um, and then I'm doing two more this year but they're gonna be all hand painted tile like custom made mosaic and stuff so they're gonna be another level than the first one so yeah I'm excited I can't wait to see those uh, are you allowed to reveal where those ones are gonna be both in Florida in Florida yeah yeah awesome. Weird, weirdly enough yeah. Both in Florida. Yeah. And actually, we were talking about one that you did, uh, now I remember, it was in Roosevelt Island, yes. which is yes. in New York. Is that pool still... It's there, yeah. Yeah, I we, mean, should, we could have met there. They, we could have gone for a swim. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not... It's like for the people that live in the building. In the, it's like, in yeah, the so you can't, right. you can't visit it. But they're doing rotating murals every year, I think, so I'm not sure if they still rotate them. But um, pools like, like that, out, like if you paint outside where you actually have a lot of track traffic and walk um you know you have to upkeep them pretty well because yeah. it's only paint um so they just decided to like rotate instead of just like upkeeping and freshing the same art they're rotating artists and i think 2020 was my year which was a good one because everyone was stuck at home and so it was i think for the residents there it was like really cool to just like watch out of the windows how we were painting the pool and like getting some color into their lives even though they're like you know kind of isolated um during that time so that was that was um <laughs> there's a guy doing some kind of clap <laughs> dance a clap dance i've never <laughs> seen that before uh, maybe let, let's stroll over let's stroll over here a little bit <laughs> clapping's quite loud actually it's very loud but yeah i think um yeah i think the pools are uh, I, I mean i love i love them alex i think they look awesome and uh, i was interested in how uh pools and art there's actually a bit of a connection isn't there you see hot knee and Picasso, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's some been kind of done pool before, stuff. for sure. Yeah, and I think put and um, yeah, there was some some kind of pool related art at LACMA once as well. But mostly pools are kind of there. Yeah, they're just there. They're, they're kind of a big a big canvas waiting to be yeah kind of explored, aren't they? Yeah, so. and, they, and it's awesome. We just they like have two lives too because the empty artwork when yeah. the pool is empty looks completely different than when so you when fill the water, wild water. Yeah. so it's kind of like a really cool thing too and yeah. I always am really good in documenting stuff I want to have everything like a million times photographed rather than no pictures so I always like document it without and with and it's just like a whole it's like two artworks almost yeah. because the colors change through the blue and um, so like yellows become greens and things like that so and I guess you were thinking specifically about how the water would affect yep. the yeah, color yeah. when you were I do like 3D designs. renders ahead yeah. of time and fill the 3D render basically with yeah. fake water on the computer That's to cool. see that effect to yeah. also show the client um, what they're gonna get because yeah. sometimes like I want this navy and this blue I was like you won't even see that you know yeah. you will see it as black and nothing right yeah. so it's helpful if you visualize it ahead of time of how it's gonna look with water yeah, yeah. definitely and do you think color is something that's more more kind of um, powerful than people realize like do, do, do you think there's a kind of philosophical aspect of colors for you that's more than just I think so yeah and it's like um, I think a lot of people are afraid of colors too mm. for I don't know what reason but um, it's weird because like every time someone sees my work or looks at my work they always just like oh it just makes me so happy and I was just like it's partly my work because it is very naive and happy but it's also very much the color that just like change they just change your environment mm. like instantly and I think they at least for me personally they definitely uplift my mood and I feel way more comfortable in a home that's like warm and colorful than the not right so yeah. and I grew up in a the not so uh, I, I yeah. think it was like always a battle I wanted to have like red wall I remember as a kid and that was not allowed for, in my parents house they're like no like white black and white and yeah. navy only kind of thing yeah. I think they didn't even I think my mom's still scared scared of color like mm. even in her house now she she only now got two of my rugs even though yeah. I'm making it for almost 10 years she 
finally embraced it and it was like a, she had to buy new rugs because her beige ones mm. were getting old so she was like I'm doing it and she like got some color but while ordering them for me she's like you think this one is too much yeah <laughs> and I was like no not too much yeah and she is now really happy but it's just like some it's yeah. just until you don't until you don't have it you don't really know what it's gonna do yeah that's really interesting well it's just occurring to me as well we're quite near 11 Howard where Anna yeah. Delvey famously stayed for a long time and didn't didn't pay the bill oh and, was and, it there yeah it was oh, that's in, so funny because that's what I'm I am just saying I was gonna say is that near where you're right I'm is staying that, at you're 11 staying at 11 Howard yeah. that's where and I've stayed there as well and that's where that's where Anna Delvey famously yeah took took them to the cleaners and Anna always, wait that's the one yeah that's the one yeah that's the one where, where, where she oh, uh, where so she stayed yeah, I, exactly. I didn't even put it together yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if they've got a, a, a plaque up outside or anything they do <laughs> I don't know we, they don't we, we, we have, we'll have a look later maybe they don't but, have it right, there right yeah, right because I, I I stayed there all week yeah. so I would have right that's fine right yeah, yeah. But, but Anna of course uh, famously only wears black and when you go to a lot of those kind of not that I'm uh, it, um um, asked to go to many fashion week parties but yeah. you, just, you see everyone wearing black and in the art world as well there's a lot of like it's changing there's kind of an austerity is it changing it's now changing. Do you think people yeah. are kind of I embracing feel like even with like the just now the Paris fashion week mm. that just happened last yeah. week you see it definitely more I mean it's still the black but yeah. there, you, it's changing a lot and I think with just like Balenciaga or uh, Bottega Veneta having like all these bright own colors I think yeah. Valentino has the pink Bottega has the green and I think them owning a color now right. they're kind of like all bright out of nowhere like and Hathaway was wearing like all pink and stuff so I think it's changing a little bit like everyone is embracing color even in that fashion you were ahead of the curve Alex uh, I don't think you so started the, you started the <laughs> I trend. need to buy my own color yeah what what color would you choose what would be your it's, it's funny how that works because I don't people ask me always about my favorite mm. color and I don't have one like there's colors I don't even like but I use them in my work often because they go really well with the whole yeah. thing so like orange is like a color that I will never really like go and just like let's paint the wall orange or get my bed sheets in orange but it's you can find it in almost every of my paintings so yeah. artwork is orange in there but it's just such a good like complementary color to make it all feel good yeah um, so I don't think I have one color and then again like it keeps changing yeah. right so like um i wouldn't even know but um i think it would be really hard for me to be like oh i want to be a purple or pink but my partner who's been with me for a long time he always calls it proba peach even though I, proba peach. yeah so he was always like proba peach look proba peach yeah. <laughs> and he means that kind of nudie color yeah um but that was like beginning of my career i used a lot of that yeah. and then and I still use it, but not as much. But mm. he still calls it Proba Peach. So I love that. Um, anything he sees, like let's get Proba Peach this, Proba Peach <laughs> that. I'm like, okay. I was re <laughs> I was reading the other day about um, Massimo Vignelli. I love graphic design and his his um, uh, work on the New York subway system. And I think the use of colours in the subway system and the maps and the, the the bullets and things I think works very very well and gives it actually a nice kind of clarity I think the New York subway system is quite complicated in a lot of ways and I think you know the way they use colors actually helps to you know to simplify navigate, yeah. yeah to navigate the system so I think that's another example where actually you, know, yeah. you can say like today I was in I was thinking in my mind okay I need to get the yellow train it's like the Q yeah, train but yeah. I was like okay I need to get the yellow one yeah. you just look for the yellow and kind of go towards it yeah so. and then it's kind of easy because only uptown or downtown right right so yeah yeah like, yeah exactly well then you've got the whole question of whether you should get an express or not but that's a, yeah, that's a, a different conversation thing. for a different different yeah. day um, but yeah color certainly uh, certainly very very important isn't it well let's take it let's take a final stroll over here just okay. before we finish Alex and we'll walk we we'll walk around um, maybe where the music is and the dominoes are and stuff and Sounds good. maybe we'll just um, we'll just finish by um, maybe discussing what your plans are for the future and what kind of projects you have lined up what are you um, sort of working on at the moment yeah I it's um, I'm working on so many things all the time I think yeah. that's just how I my brain works and how I function so when like even with the pandemic when that happened my first reaction was like okay cool work get the projects out of yeah. the you know the ones that I never have time for out of the folders and like start doing them and 
and so one of them I'm launching in two weeks or three weeks I don't know on the 28th of October I'm uh, so I have Studio Proba and then I have Proba Home but I'm gonna launch Proba Paws so it's like a whole pet line with wow. everything you need for your little pet and nice furniture and that sounds so cute. Uh, everything so we just finished like the photo shoot for that and stuff and then obviously I'm working on the pools and a couple of other murals um, and then I'm doing uh, public sculptures for commission in Dubai for a permanent public sculpture project. So oh, wow. yeah, for the beginning of spring next year. So it's yeah. been it's been busy and that fun. Sounds, sounds and really interesting. All random stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. What kind of stuff can you get for your pets if you if you wanted oh, to yeah. get something for a dog? What would you what would you suggest from the line, yeah, Alex? Uh, yeah, there's so much. So I just in the beginning I wanted I have a dog that I mentioned ten times for already, but um, in the beginning What's your I was dog like. Again? What's his what, name? Yeah, or and what, Sam, what? and he's just a total mud from Texas right. rescue, but he's like a shepherd something. Very smart, oh, lovely, very cute. Yeah. Um, but buying stuff for him, especially because I care about space and like furniture and all that stuff, it was really hard for me to like find the right bed or that I like that is like, you know, in the also handmade or like some kind of like thought to it and love to it rather than just like producing mass produced somewhere so yeah so I wanted to first just add dog beds to my home line but then it started with dog beds and then it started with dog tags and my shapes where you can put them engrave the name in and then it started with blankets and then it started like continue with that my shapes would be awesome as dog toys as well so now it's like a whole line of I think from bowls to anything you can imagine for the dog and 90% sustainable and like handmade so that was kind of my my thing yeah. um, like dog toys are not reg regulated in the US and I think not in Europe either so you could just like use the worst plastic if you wanted to which I think is crazy because yeah. they are like extension of our family so the dog toys they are made they are all like medical grade silicone and I tried to like even though it's more expensive obviously to produce I kind of like value the to be like the in integrity of doing good for them as well so I tried really hard so hopefully it's been a year and a half in the making and so <laughs> sounds fantastic and then off to yeah. Dubai for the for the public sculpture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Busy. that would be amazing yeah so if that all you know knock on wood it all happens but it looks like it so perfect right so we're going to let you get back to the, to the Anna Delvey suite in your uh, hotel Alex I actually just checked out today <laughs> checked so I have my computer and everything here well you travel um, light <laughs> yeah and oh, then the rest of yeah, the desk come, come, uh, yeah, yep yep exactly. so um, but I had no idea that was that hotel but yeah yeah. Yep. True story. I should have done that. Yeah. Not paid my bill. No, yeah. Why did you pay the bill? Exactly. exactly. You could, could have just left. Exactly. That's what you're supposed to do there. So. Uh, yeah. Just don't pay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Alex, I hope you've enjoyed walking around uh, Columbus yeah, Park with thank me today. You. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. Yeah, and um, thank you yeah, for having me. Maybe I'll see you uh, when I'm in Portland next time. <laughs> yeah. Let me know when you're there. Definitely. Or in LA or somewhere yes. else. Will do. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. that episode of Park Date. Um, there's lots more where that came from and there'll be more in the future as well. If you enjoyed it, please leave a review, um, good or bad, make them funny, I'll be reading out the best ones and there'll be a prize for the one that makes me laugh the most. Name check some trees in your reviews and leave them wherever you get your podcast from. Check out our website, parkdate.co.uk. And um, if you see me walking around in the park, come and say hello. I think that was the sound of someone sneezing. Um, yes. Thank you. Bye-bye.